cagey game towards the back of that pack, or is he actually tiring a little bit early on? That's a lovely shot, isn't it? The sun rising over the gulf to the east, over the mountains, in fact, over to the east there. And I'm really encouraged, as you said, Paul, to see uh, Klosterhalfen there to the right of this picture for this side-on shot, pushing it along. Now, her debut was so spectacular when she ran, what, 65-41. And we can see why, because wow. that 3.10 from a 3.4 is a significant slowing of the pace. Interestingly, Coco doesn't like to run with a watch. She doesn't like to have a watch on her. She likes to run. Hey, do you know what? Having a few months downtime every couple of years is not a bad thing no and it's it's nice although that still is 310 so she still is wanting that to to pick up and we can see it's dropped back a little bit and i think when something that you really enjoy doing and you really want to be doing is taken away from you when you get the opportunity that uh, also recognizing the fact that this finishing pace although used to be quick has perhaps been dulled a little bit by those those many marathons and all of that marathon success so wants to keep the pace honest all the way through rather than relying on a very fast last kilometer well good to see these uh, women pushing it along now I'm a little surprised I have to say that uh, the burden of being at the front of the group in effect Paula has been down to Coco Klosterhalfen actually Adam Lipschitz who, who is down on the elite men's start list who's dropped back from South Africa and appears to be now looking at uh, checking out his watch I think it has decided maybe it wasn't happening for him on, on his race and is going to like offer his services in helping the elite women to to run a quick time and a white cap at the front Well, there you can see the women's splits, 310, 310, 309 for that eighth kilometer. So uh, it's consistent, but not quite as quick as they might have wanted. A little frustrating, perhaps. 8K gone. And now approaching the eight. Cut the pace in the orange vest a little bit to close up on that and back in the women's race. Still a steady pack that's settled down now. 304 through that kilometer. So their pace has picked up and still Constance Klosterhalfen at the front, trying to, to push the pace on. We can see Alemu is in there. I think that's Yeshine on the far side in the orange vest. Perez Jepchircha, of course, in the lighter orange vest, settled in between them. Margaret Chalimo towards the front now, taking it a little bit upon herself to, to lead or spearhead this group of women approaching the 10 kilometer point for them. Several of these uh, women looking pretty comfortable, I have to say. And do you think that's Paula is because they're running at around six, high 65, 66 minute tempo. They're coming towards uh, 10K now. And when the uh, course record was set, just uh, checking, she went through 10K in 30.28, but that is a super fast time as she ran back in 2022, 64.14. I'm not sure it's going to be anywhere near that. 3.04, that last kilometre, and the predicted time. Well, in the high 65s at the moment. That's them going through 10K in 31.09, and when the course record was set, Gebrezia went through in 30.28. So, the women's race has gone off at a slightly slower tempo, relatively speaking, than the men's, but it still promises the time down there in the 65s. Through 10k for the women in 31.09. That's the official split, and good to see as well. The Olympic champion hanging in there. Perez Jepcher on that men's race. I think it is fluctuating a little bit at the front end of that men's race and in the women's race here. Well, Chalimo is uh, looking strong, tucked in behind the pacemakers. Margaret Chalimo, Ken Boy. She's a 64-46 runner. She went, ran that when she won in Valencia back on uh, last October. She had a wonderful 2023. The tall figure to the right of picture there, Margaret Chalimo. She was fourth in the World Championships, 5,000 metres in Budapest 
last summer on the track. She has a wonderful range. She's an 8.21, 3,000 meter runner. She's had this, uh, got this really fast half marathon time of 64 minutes. She was silver medalist at the World Half Marathon Championships in Riga, Latvia last October. In fact, the first four from those World Half Marathon Championships in Riga are in this weight race. And uh, I don't know if we're going to see a fourth world record set here today because we have had three women's world records in the Razal Kaima over the last uh, 16 years. But it is still building up for a nice race. It's 65.49, the predicted time, Paula. And still, a Perez Jep Chirtier sitting in the pack there, just tucked in behind Chalimo, the shortest figure of all of them. She's, uh, she's an ultimate racer, isn't she? She doesn't like to go to the front and push it along until the latter stages. No, she does, and I'm just trying to spot Klosterhalf, and then has she gone? She has, actually. Brought back a little bit. Yeshine is still up there. Sekilu is still there as well. Well, that's a big surprise. Perez Jip Chir Chir dropping away from the uh, front end of the pack and you can see a 307 there for that 14th kilometer a 308 and a 307 before that so the uh, time is coming up pretty consistently Gebre Salama and Yeshene battling it out and Gebre Salama, Tigist Gebre Salama Lama is a 65-46 athlete she's heading for something very close to her personal best here she's one of the few to have raced this year she ran the uh, national championships and won it over 10,000 meters back on the 4th of february only a couple of weeks ago and i wonder paul if it's not a good thing to come into a race like this with a couple of races in your legs i mean i don't know about you but i always prefer to i'd build up a, a sort of head of steam when i've got three or four races leading in something. I, I was not one of those who could just train for months and months and come out and produce an optimal run. See, I, um, I, I could do that. But you're but a I marathon think, runner. Yeah, and I think some, uh, we've got a balance of that in this race. So we have women who need those races to get into it. And we have other women who can just come out from training and put the performance in there. I talked about Sakila who's still in there in the back of this group. She's a Tanzanian. Comes in with a personal best of 69.32 set in Lucerne last year and so she is on at the moment for an outstanding chunk to be chipped off her personal best time and is very much up there figuring when the likes of Perez Chipchicha have dropped back away down the road behind her. Well Yeshene in the orange just tucked in behind Gebre Salama, Ababel Yeshene Berhana to give her her full name she holds the uh, Ethiopian national record at 64.31. She won here in Razalkaima back in 2020. She won, actually, by 18 seconds from then world record holder in the marathon, Bridget Koskai. She went on to become to run uh, fifth in the world championships in Gdynia in just outside 65 minutes. She's a good track racer, great consistent. She's, she's a 220 marathon runner. So probably uh, Yeshene there in the uh, second place uh, of those women in the orange is uh, on her sweet spot the half marathon it would uh, you know the fact that she hasn't broken 220 yet which is becoming more and more common would suggest and you look at her fast times over uh, how she's a tall figure isn't she Gabriel Salam or is she she looks to be tall figure she she holds herself tall and she looks comfortable too and they are running quickly. So that was a 302 split for the women through 16 kilometers as well. I think it may have, have, have affected the men's timing because we have now seen a 229 kilometer come up for the 18th K, which is, is not correct no, on no. my board. So I think yeah. absolutely would. But look at this. Gebre Salama in the women's race. Has she got a bit of daylight or is uh, Yeshene still dogging her heels? She's bouncing along there between these two male athletes accompanying her. We just need a bit of a longer shot, don't we, to see who is still in that group, but still very, very relaxed. Look at how she's just focused on the heels of, of Lipschitz in, in front of her. Uh, a lot of that comes from the training that they will run. They will run a lot of... Pull up back to the racing here, but I say the racing. Well, well, it looks like we've got a runaway winner. I'm just looking back down the road through the mist, and I can't see any sign of the second-placed 
athlete, which was Yeshine before, uh, but certainly Gebra Salama looking very, very good, very smooth, and got this race all wrapped up. And it is now about just how fast can she run her personal best, 65.46. So she's not a million miles away from it from the previous splits that we had been getting. Well, I wonder if anybody is telling her that she's got a big gap behind her, that she's got the race run. And sometimes that re relaxing of pressure, the predicted time is uh, just outside 65 minutes, about 65.20. Sometimes that relaxing of pressure enables you to run faster, doesn't it? Because you stride out without hip in inhibition, without worrying about those around you. Well, you don't need to worry about um, over committing. You can afford to go a little bit quicker and then drop back. But I think now we have a chance to, to go and listen to an interview with the... W We'll wait for playing that interview in after the finish of this women's race. Because Gebra Salama now running extremely quickly and clo uh, closing in, what, about three minutes of running for her? She yes. can sense that. You can see she's weaving her way through the mass runners around her at this moment. But I think that would actually help her. It gives her something to work on as well as Lipschitz helping her. She is also catching runners and that gives you a good feeling. It helps you to feel better as you're racing in. And what I like uh, about this uh, athlete, Get Sigi Gebre Salama, Gebre Rufal, is that she's the complete runner, Paula. She's great on the country, she's great on the track, she's good on the roads too, and I like to see that. An athlete who's gone through the gears. She was third in the World Junior Cross Country in Aarhus in uh, Denmark back in 2019. She was silver medalist in the World Cross Country last year in uh, February in Bathurst, Australia. She's got great track pedigree. She's run 8.38 indoors for 3,000, 30.04 for 10,000. That was in Hengelo in uh, the Netherlands last summer. She's... Uh, I know, getting here some consolation, I suppose, too, for that fourth place in Riga at the World, uh, World Road Running Championships in uh, Latvia last October. She was just outside the medals there, fourth there in 67.50. Three great halves last year. Uh, she's got the cross-country pedigree, she's got the track pedigree, and this is going to be one of the biggest wins of her career. And she's used that track pedigree recently as well to win those European ten, those Ethiopian 10,000-metre championships just a couple of weeks ago in Addis at altitude in 32 minutes. So not a quick time, but racing and beating the other Ethiopian athletes to be Ethiopian champion is something to give you confidence coming into a race like that. And she really is now pouring it all on. I'm sure she can sense that she is on for a personal best here. Yeah, that time she ran 32.15 at altitude is, is even at altitude is not quick by the standards of these athletes. But now she's being forced to stride up because uh, Lipschitz there and the other pacemaker are doing a great job of dragging her through. She's staying well clear of the rest. She can't even see the finish line. Look at that view. That is unique. I think in all my years of road race commentaries, I've never seen the view for the winner coming towards oh. the finish line. What on earth was happening there? She, I don't think he was gesturing to the bike, and she thought he was gesturing to her to turn right through a gap there. Oh, dear, oh, dear. But no, she's OK. Striding towards the line now for a very comfortable victory, and a famous victory here is uh, this superb athlete. And the time is going to be quick. Watch the clock. Sigi Gebre Salama, the 23-year-old Ethiopian who is still very much on the rise in her young career. She has medals from the World Cross Country at junior and senior levels. And she comes towards the line now. She's destroyed the opposition in the second half of this race. She's looked relaxed and comfortable for most of this second half. But she comes to the tape now and breaks it in 65-14 unofficially brilliant run and the gap behind her well we can't tell how big it is because her opposition are lost in the midst of Raz Alkaima. but she now puts her name down onto that roster of winners of this race here in rag in the end it closed very very quickly smashed her personal best by about 30 seconds and it is Yeshine who has held on two second again can just about perhaps see the legs of the athlete running in third place behind her at 65, what, say 46? 40, 40.